I should point out that uh, I don't actually super hate LiDAR as much as may sound, um, but at, at SpaceX, uh, SpaceX Dragon uses LiDAR to navigate to the space station and dock. Not only that, we, de SpaceX developed its own LiDAR from scratch to do that, and I spearheaded that effort personally, because in that scenario, LiDAR makes sense, and in cars, it's friggin' stupid. So no. Elon didn't actually change his mind, but yes, SpaceX does actually use LiDAR. Stick around to the end of the video to hear Elon's true opinion on LiDAR. It's good. Even experts don't seem to agree on the etymology of the name LiDAR, which is either a mashup of light and radar, an acronym for light detection and ranging, or in some references, laser detection and ranging. If you're totally new to the world and research of autonomous vehicles, these are the main technology systems that the companies in the full self-driving race have chosen to use. There are now many LiDAR startup companies, a few main players, and some automakers such as GM and Waymo are actually designing their own LiDAR systems in-house to reduce the astronomical costs of the system. Before Waymo created their own system, bringing the cost of a unit to $7,500, which is still high, they cost $75,000 per unit. Here are the choices the main players have made so far. In the LiDAR corner, we have Waymo, GM, Ford, Uber, Lyft, Toyota, BMW, Volkswagen. And in the radar corner, we have Tesla. So what is LiDAR? It measures the distance to a target by illuminating that target with laser light and measuring the reflected light with a sensor. Differences in laser return times and wavelengths can then be used to make a digital 3D representation of the target in the surrounding area. This is accomplished by a sensor being placed on the vehicle, which for the love of aesthetics alone, let's hope that this isn't our best option. Tesla's radar system works similarly, but uses radio waves instead of lasers and is heavily focused on pairing data gathered from radio waves with computer vision and a neural network, think of a human brain, to learn what is being detected, not just that something is being detected. The major difference all comes down to vision. LiDAR can detect obstacles in the road, such as a plastic bag, but won't be able to determine what it is and thus may cause the car to slam on the brakes, which as you know, if this were to happen on the highway at high speeds, it could be a fatal situation. Tesla's software, however, uses its neural net to learn from vision imaging that the obstacle is a plastic bag, allowing the car to continue on without hitting the brakes. LiDAR does have viable use cases. In a static environment, without edge cases or any unexpected scenarios, it does a great job of creating high resolution 3D maps and it's already being implemented in places like Phoenix, Arizona. Waymo is doing some pretty cool stuff with LiDAR and ride hailing, but it's limited to very, very specific use cases and locations. However, to obtain level five autonomy, where there's no driver activity needed and the car can travel anywhere in the world, in any weather, at any time of day, it's critical that visual recognition is part of the equation for all of the edge case scenarios. Before I cover the critical aspects of this conversation, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will be creating a Facebook group or a Discord chat for our community. Please let me know in the comments below which you'd prefer. So back to the discussion. It boils down to adaptability and data. LiDAR is an inferior option when it comes to adapting to unexpected events where Tesla's system will function as close to a human as possible, with vision and a brain neural network to make decisions in any scenario. This neural network is only as good as the data it can learn from. That's why Tesla's approximately 650,000 car fleet with hardware two and above, driving 1,000 miles each per month for a total of 650 million miles monthly is so incredibly important. For context, Waymo systems gather about 1 million miles of data each month. To date, Tesla has over 1 billion miles driven compared to Waymo, which has surpassed just 10 million miles. You get the idea. More real world data equals a better trained neural net in bringing society that much closer to fully autonomous cars. To be fair, Waymo does have simulation that it uses to improve, but the question is what's more valuable, real world data or a simulation? I'll let you all debate this in the comments. A paper was recently published that agrees with Elon titled Pseudo LiDAR from Visual Depth Estimation, Bridging the Gap in 3D Object Detection for Autonomous Driving. 
The paper discusses how cameras can be used to generate a 3D map nearly as accurate as LiDAR. The point of the Cornell paper is instead of a $7,500 or more bulky LiDAR system, you can have cameras for a fraction of the cost to provide the same benefit. Perhaps Elon has a point here. LiDAR is, is a fool's errand. And, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. <laughs> doomed. Expensive, expensive sensors that are, are unnecessary. It's like having a whole bunch of expensive appendices. Like one appendix is bad, well now they want to put a whole bunch of them. That's ridiculous. You'll see. There's far too much money at stake in this game. Someone will figure out the solution. And of course, there can be more than one solution for a wide variety of use cases. The thing is, right now, you can actually buy a Tesla relatively affordably with all of the hardware and software required for full self-driving. So, if Tesla does solve this problem first, you can have full access to the benefits of a car with full self-driving. At the moment, you can't go in the market and buy a Waymo or an Uber or a cruise. I just created a video about Tesla's full self-driving chip. If you're interested in this space, I'd encourage you to take a few minutes to check it out. It was a very controversial decision and we're about to find out in the coming months if Tesla made the right decision. As always, thank you for watching.